With the 2023 general elections around the corner, Nigerians and the international community are optimistic that the election will redefine the country's democracy, especially with the level of participation in the just concluded voter registration exercise across the country. However, the recent attacks on INEC facilities in some parts of the country have been a thing of concern to government and other stakeholders. As a matter of fact, INEC has confirmed a total of about 50 physical attacks so far. These have been recorded since the commencement of political campaigns in September 28, 2022. This has led to an emergency meeting of the Interagency Consultative Committee on Election Security in Abuja, geared towards ensuring a free, fair, credible and violence-free 2023 general elections across the country. Now, what is actually the motive behind these attacks and who are these perpetrators? How best can this be handled at this critical time of electioneering process? To what extent will these attacks affect the 2023 general elections and what should be done? What should be the collective responsibility of all stakeholders? These are some of the questions our guests shall be finding answers to in a moment. This is Nigeria Today and you're welcome to the program. I am Lydia Odije Ochi. With me in the studio is Lebari Samson Undu, Director, Security, INEC. We're glad to have you join us this evening in Nigeria. Today. Thank you and welcome. Also in the studio is Kingsley Uzoma, a security expert and chief consultant at Eagle Rescue and Alarm Systems Limited. You're welcome to the program. Good evening. Thank you for having me. Okay, let me start with you, Lebari. It's from, the, from my introduction, it is evident that there has been several attacks, especially on INEC infrastructure. And INEC offices have become targets for us on it. Why? If you ask me, mm -hmm. who will I ask? <laughs> I'm from INEC. But the problem is this. It has continuously happened because Critical stakeholders have always not done what we are supposed to do. The man who goes to throw the bomb, the man who ignites the fire, he's not doing it because he has any peculiar interests. Somebody somewhere is playing the drum for him. And we know that there can be no smoke We're without the fire. fire. And so what we need to do, as it is today, is that Nigerians and critical stakeholders must know that security is everybody's business. Democracy has been long fought for, and we must sustain it. We can't go back. Just like my teacher used to tell me in my university days, that if I say education is expensive, when I want to buy books, I should try ignorance. ignorance. And ignorance is not an option. So in this case, there is no option to democracy. And so Nigerians must put on their thinking cap and must rise up to the occasion to okay. ensure that critical infrastructures, not just of INEC, but of any other institution, is not destroyed. It takes time to build, mm. but it's very easy to destroy. To destroy. Okay. And the resources to rebuild these things are just not there. The economy is not what it should be not worldwide. So it's not only a Nigerian problem, of course. but it's a worldwide problem. Mm -hmm. And therefore, we know that there are crises, insecurity problems in everywhere. Mm -hmm. But that of Nigeria mm -hmm. is of a peculiar type. Why do we need to destroy these things? Are we not happy that democracy is thriving? Why do we want to destroy what we have done? It's not easy, but I think that the security situation, the security of the authorities in Nigeria, they are on top of the situation. Okay. Uh, Kingsley, yes. you're a security expert. I would also like you to 
uh, handle this question. Now, as a security expert, what do you think we should do differently now to prevent further occurrences? Well, um, first and foremost, we must uh, admit the fact that um, maybe we are in a third world uh, nation mm -hmm. and um, maybe uh, democracy for us, we are still uh, at the baby stage when you compare us to nations like the United States of America and what have you. So uh, in countries like uh, South Africa, if we are to debate, uh, whenever there are issues, you see public uh, infrastructures usually uh, suffer most. And the issue being that um, Nigerians or the average uh, citizen, they find it difficult to admit the fact that these critical infrastructures are not property of government, because the people are the government. Mm -hmm. So if you destroy it and you think, oh, you are, you are trying to maybe a uh, wicked INEC, the chairman of INEC, the president, that's not the property of uh, the chairman of INEC. It's not the property of the president or the state government. Rather, the same resources that would have used to channel uh, other area in the nation will be used to replace or to rebuild uh, this infrastructure. So by so doing, you also feel the pain because mm -hmm. government, maybe the money you expected for to build health care, education will be channeled to another critical area because by and large, an um, election must take place mm -hmm. in this nation every four, four years. And the security agencies uh, really need to do uh, much beyond what they are doing uh, at the moment. Yes, the police is the lead uh, agency as long as democracy is concerned and the elections which he will uh, uh, confirm to us, that even the police at INEC, they have a liaison uh, office and the officer in charge. But even at that, that is not enough. Mm -hmm. Then other sister security agencies and those, they really need to be part of it and it has to be in intelligent uh, driven. Mm -hmm. And again, the Nigerian security and civil defense, if you ask them, they will tell you that their mandate is critical infrastructure protection. Mm -hmm. What role have they been playing lately mm -hmm. in protecting okay, this infrastructure? Okay, let me come back to you, Libari. In Ogun State alone, like what we're seeing on the social media, even on, on our news bulletins, over 65,000 permanent voter cards were destroyed. 65,900. 900, yes, to be precise. Now, is, uh, will there be any possibility of reprinting these PVCs and the natural materials that were destroyed? Yes. It means those people will be disenfranchised. No, nobody will be disenfranchised okay. under the leadership of Mahmoud Yakubu. Okay. Let me retreat what he said. Okay. The resident electoral commissioner has been mandated mm -hmm. to reproduce the voter identification number of those cards mm -hmm. and send it immediately to the headquarters mm -hmm. so that the printing of start. those cards can start. That's wonderful. And then we will send it back for redistribution. Mm -hmm. Just like uh, Kingsley said, mm -hmm. resources that would have been used for other things mm -hmm. are now being channeled to what we willingly destroyed. But because INEC doesn't want anybody to say he or she is disenfranchised because of the burning of that office, INEC has decided to reprint those cards. Once the VIN number comes, it will be reprinted and sent back for distribution. Okay. For those whose cards were burnt, take it, this statement, and take it to the bank. You will have your voter's card come January 2023. That's wonderful. Now, what should be done to offices or places where these sensitive materials are being kept? This should be like, uh, I, I can't call this one a warning anymore, it's something that's been happening. So what advice would you give? Well, um, INEC needs to review its, uh, revisit its security uh, documents because trends are changing. So you need to take, uh, review the documents you have, go back to the drawing board and know what to do. Maybe if there are areas where you need to maybe add more preventive uh, measures to make it, uh, maybe you take one or two more additional uh, steps mm -hmm. to make it harder for the intruders or the arsonists to get uh, to, to break in, it will be more difficult. Mm -hmm. So if that being the case, they also need to maybe deploy a more of a surveillance uh, gadget mm -hmm. because CCTV. part of what we do, you see, when intruders are coming, mm -hmm. you get signal because we have uh, their equipment 
that okay. does that. So okay. if they are coming beyond the level that an unauthorized person yes, shouldn't get to, so you get signal. For instance, we have a uh, INEC offices across all the 36 states of the federation, including FCT. So the same offices can be remoted here at the national headquarters. Mm -hmm. All you need to do with the use of uh, CCTV cameras mm -hmm. remotely, you can monitor, enhance, then maybe on your emergency action plan, you co-opt the, maybe the, the security agency. So you need to have uh, maybe alliance with the police, uh, rapid uh, responder uh, squad. Mm -hmm. So when you have that, maybe it senses, maybe there are issues, then the alarm triggers, mm -hmm. they get the report and they are able to respond uh, mm -hmm. swiftly. So okay. those are part of the measures among others that can be taken. Okay, let me come to you, Libari. Let's talk about aside infrastructure for uh, for uh, uh, for the uh, protecting infra infrastructure. Now, what about security of the officials themselves? Uh, like I said, the commission is not leaving any stone unturned. We value the personnel as much as we value the materials and the infrastructures. Maybe more more mm -hmm. because we all have children you know INEG has an unarmed army of our children youths the NYSC group that does this job for us they are the basic group we have mm -hmm. and they are our children I will protect them we will do all it takes to protect them before the stand of elections from Anambra to Ekiti to Oshun. When coppers go out, their lodges were normally destroyed because opponents of those who do not want to see progress think that they are the ones who are making them not to do whatever they want to do. Mm -hmm. But INEC has gone beyond that. If they go out for an assignment, their lodges are protected so that they can go out and come back secured see. and free. Okay. INEC has taken measures mm -hmm. to ensure that nobody, even the voters, mm -hmm. are protected. protected. And that is the reason why this committee was formed, Interconsultative Committee on Election Security, that comprises all the security agencies mm -hmm. and paramilitary agencies mm -hmm. that work hand in hand. They are at all levels of government, mm -hmm. at the national level, at the state level and at the local government level. And the synergy between the security operatives before this was formed and now mm -hmm. is different. And so the challenge is now over to those who think they can overpower the security agencies. Okay. And I know that the intel, the intelligence gathering has been upped by the security agencies. Mm -hmm. They share intelligence. They synergize mm -hmm. to ensure that what happens to A does not happen to B. Okay. And so we think we are moving forward. Okay, that's nice to know. We'll pause here to hear the, rem the remarks of the INEC chairman, NSA, IGP, on this matter, 2023 election safeguarding electoral materials as put together by Thomas Ogbetere. Take a look. First, the simultaneous attacks on our local government area offices in Abiyakuta South in Ogun State and Ede South in Oshun State. Turning to the spate of attacks during the ongoing political campaigns and rallies, the Commission has so far tracked 50 incidents across 21 states of the Federation and the Federal Capital Territory. Those people who have gangsters working for them, I want to send a very, very clear warning to each and every one, regardless of whichever party, including the party of the president, for as long as you decide to scuttle the electoral process, the law enforcement agencies will equally be uninhibited in reacting to whatever actions you have taken, you will be visited with appropriate, with commensurate response. I think a word is enough for the wise. 
With the incidences so far, arrests have been made, investigations have been conducted, and some suspects have been made charged to court. Welcome back. The program is still Nigeria today and we're discussing the 2023 election safeguarding electoral materials with Lebari Samson Undo, Director of Security INEC, and Kingsley Uzoma, Chief Consultant at Eagle Rescue and Alarm Systems Limited. Now you heard the remarks from the INEC chairman, the NSA and the IGP. What else would you like? What, what, how would you react to what they had to say? Well, I'm um, privy of the fact that the police and the INEC, uh, the security agencies rather, are doing uh, a lot mm. behind the scene on the election security mm. management, town hall meetings, workshops, uh, among others. Mm -hmm. But I also expect it to go beyond that at the party level. Mm. The uh, candidates at various uh, levels, they have a responsibility, a big one for that matter, mm -hmm. in terms of educating their supporters mm -hmm. on maybe code of conduct to make sure for a peaceful uh, poll. Then we also need to utilize the, the various uh, religious homes, churches, uh, mosques and others to let the people know that even the INEC staff you intend to attack are your brothers and sisters. These are not foreigners. Mm -hmm. Even the man on the uniform, the security agents, outside the uniform, they are returning home. They are our fathers, they are our brothers. All of us are connected to them. So we shouldn't be seeing them uh, as enemies. And it doesn't pay anybody mm -hmm. or, or go well for anyone to destroy the materials. And mm -hmm. tomorrow you are crying that maybe there is bad governance, things are not working. That means you are the architect of the problem. Yes. Now, Lebari. You know, in our climb, it seems like the issue of violence during elections or campaigns has been ongoing, you understand. But from what uh, we just watched there, they are going to be met with whoever decides to go into this political toggery or violence will be met with maximum force. But still, Nigerians look forward to a time when you can just sit at your home and with your phone vote. You don't have to go anywhere. How do you see that in the foreseeable future? Technology, use of technology by INEC is an ongoing process. Mm -hmm. 35 years ago, nobody knew that we would not be using incident form again. Mm -hmm. Incident form was devised as a means of not disenfranchising Nigerians. Mm -hmm. But like everything that we do, we are always doing it in the breach. We now used it against the process. Mm -hmm. INEC is not interested in who wins, who loses. Mm -hmm. INEC is interested in the transparency of the process that everybody will see it and follow it. And so they have devised this technology, mm -hmm. Beavers. Mm -hmm. Let it be known to Nigerians mm -hmm. that the Beavers technology was designed by engineers in INEC, ICT department. Wow. It is not a foreign thing, it is a Nigerian system. And that BVAS is used for three things. When we are doing a registration, it is used for registration. Mm -hmm. It is used for transmission of results. Mm -hmm. It is used for accreditation. So one system for three critical and related and connected process. Mm -hmm. And everybody sees it. We are moving. Okay. Nigeria is moving. Mm -hmm. We will come to a stage where everything that other uh, climbs are doing mm -hmm. will do it and even surpass it. Yes. Because I know that in this country, the Nigeria that I know, mm -hmm. nothing is impossible when they want to put their heads together. Of course. I think that I really look forward to that. You, just, you don't have Absolutely. to go out. Absolutely. Nobody will come to your house to attack you. you sure, don't, sure. Nobody knows who you are with. You just sit down. With your, in your own your privacy and you just and it goes to a database and the results are seen there sure. so it will rule out the issue of violence or, or all that now let's say your closing remarks as we round off this program well um i'm calling on INEC and other security um, agencies to take more appropriate uh, measures in mm -hmm. terms of uh, voter education mm -hmm. especially because there is this phobia out there that maybe 
INEC, some INEC officials and security agencies are instrumental in election rigging. Mm -hmm. So even when you try to tell the people that with the beavers technology, mm -hmm. it's near impossible to rig the election, given the experiences of AKT mm -hmm. and Osho. But they still tend to believe that maybe because, because of the way we play politics in this part of the nation mm -hmm. and the INEC uh, personnel or engineers, ITs are humans and Nigerians, they are, they are likely to compromise. So we need INEC to really boost that confidence, just like he said, mm -hmm. that they are for Nigerians, they are not interested in uh, mm -hmm. anybody uh, who wins mm -hmm. or who loses, but it's more of a rhetoric okay. for the mm -hmm. average Nigerian out there. Okay, are your closing remarks? Well, Nigerians should have hope and faith in themselves. Mm -hmm. The security agencies and INEC are working closely, synergizing such that in the very foreseeable future, in fact, before we get to the next election, the next election 2023, mm -hmm. the people who sponsor these things will be fingered, will be touched, will be arraigned in court and publicly shamed. Hmm. Because if they are not, if that is not done, it will people will not do that. Again, to corroborate what you have said, public enlightenment and education is for everybody. Mm -hmm. It's not for INEC alone. Mm -hmm. The political parties can do it. The civil servants can do it. The journalists can do it. The churches can do it. Faith-based organization the should do it, it already. because it is everybody's business. business. Thank you. Thank you very much. That's Nigeria Today. A special thanks to our guest, Lebari Samsonundu, Director of Security INEC. Thank you for availing us with your presence and your contribution. You are welcome. Thank you. Kingsley Uzoma, Chief Consultant at Eagle Rescue and Alarm Systems Limited. Thank you for your contributions. We You're really welcome. appreciate you. Thank you. And to you, our viewer, thank you for staying with us. We appreciate you as well. The program is weekdays at 7.30 in the evenings on NTA News 24. You can watch this and other episodes on www.youtube.com slash NTA News 24 Hub. Once again, thanks for being a part of the program. This is the last for this week. See you next week. I am Lydia Odijochi. Have a wonderful weekend. Goodbye. <laughs>